Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori, where I take your questions. Thank you for being with me. It's good to be with you. I'm going to answer the question, is it valuable? So if you have something you want to know if it's valuable, you know, like the Humpty Dumpty cookie jar, you think it's valuable? I'll reveal it at the end. <laughs> so, but uh, I want to know about your objects, what you might think are valuable objects. And I'm taking your questions, any questions, personal, not personal, antique, art, collectible, whatever it might be. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. For those of you who are new to the newsletter, sign up. I, a lot of people are, are surprised by, oh, the newsletter, the newsletter. There's an exclusive offer in the next newsletter. So if you didn't sign up yet, now's the time to sign up. Go right down to sign up for Dr. Lori's newsletter. Put in your email address. Hit that sign up red button. We'll send it to you. But the next one that comes out, exclusive offer. Don't miss it. It's at drlaurieb.com. Yeah, yeah, great to see all of you. Let's see what questions you've got. You want to know what's if it's valuable. And, you know, a question that, that helps everybody, you know, a question that everybody might be interested in, not something only specific to your particular object, um, like this. I acquired several pieces of crystals such as these. Okay, uh, could you let me know if you might know what they are and how to find markings? Okay, so I know what they are, but how to find markings to help everybody is basically there are certain places where on crystal you're going to see markings. Sometimes the marks are going to be actual names of manufacturers or names of designers. Sometimes they're engraved in, sometimes they're stamped on. But I want you to look on the underside of figurines, sort of like for a Swarovski crystal. If you are looking at crystal pieces that are hand cut, you might look for um, a label. If the label is gone, that probably will tell you a little something. Don't forget to look in very, very specific and small areas. Hidden areas are where you want to see a marking on crystal pieces because you want the crystal and the reflections to all take place and take precedent over the mark. So on the underside, along the rim are where you're going to look for crystal on the top or the bottom. And typically you're going to be able to find a mark, a maker's mark, a number or any other kind of indicator. But look around and get out your loop because you're going to need your loop in order to make sure that you find those crystal marks. So that helps everybody. I have four Rembrandt etchings I inherited from my uncle, landscape, da, 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 da. Okay, is there a question here? There's no question here. Just says that you inherited them. This is a statement, David. So yeah, those are great. Yeah, I need you to tell me what you want to know about them. So um, Rembrandt, very important. The etchings are very common and they're also reproductions of the original etchings from the 1640s. So got to know what kind of paper, what kind of process, what you got. And a question would be good. So having them is great. I'm glad you have them, but I need to. I need a question. I found a U.S. flag in a presentation cake. Can I sell it? Previous owner doesn't want it. No documentation. Yeah, of course you can sell it. If you want to sell a United States flag, you certainly can. Um, of course, we want to be respectful of all of these types of pieces. If it's in a presentation case, that doesn't always mean that it, of course, has been um, presented to maybe a family or a family member or some member of the military. But check out what you're able to do with respect to certain types of flags and what kind of documentation that you need. Um, remember that certain flags sell very well. The case also has its own value. So good question. Yeah, great. Does Shannon Crystal have any real value? What's real value? What's real value? This is what I want to know. So real value. It doesn't sell for very much online. What does that mean? Who are you following? Right? This is the same thing that I tend to say, right? Uh, it doesn't seem like it sells much on va for value. Based on who, who are you following? Are they right? Do they, are they listing it properly? You know, all of those kinds of things. And it's going to depend on how big is the piece? How complex is the piece? Is the piece in good condition? Lots of factors impact value. So I want you to be careful when you just say, oh, it's not selling for much online. So mine must be not valuable too. Not a good way to approach this at all, at all. So Lots of information that I can help with respect on how to sell. If you want to take one of my classes about selling, or if you want to check out my blog, my websites, uh, or any of these videos about, you know, tips on selling, but, you know, be careful of that. Can Bakelite be clear? Bakelite is not typically clear. When I think of clear, I'm thinking of, you can see directly through it, like crystal clear, right? So Bakelite will not look like a piece of colorless glass. So if that's your definition of clear, so yeah. Um, Bakelite, as I've said in other videos, if you're binge watching the videos, I've taught you what to look for and how to identify Bakelite. They're easy. Uh, they won't hurt the objects like some of these acid tests. Uh, many of the tests that I've shown you about Bakelite actually are very good to the pieces, so you won't damage anything. 
uh, Wendy just had a video appraisal session. That's great. Wendy, it was nice to see, to see you. And yeah, I mean, basically I I'm happy that I was able to help with video calls and lists and such. So you get a sense of what you've got so you can move forward and make good decisions about those objects that you may not want anymore. You may want to resell or you want to hand down to the kids and you want to be fair to all the kids. A lot of the video callers say that, you know, I'm downsizing. I don't want to give one, you know, one daughter a $50 card table and my son, the $50,000 painting. That's not right. You know? So yeah, I'm glad that you were able to, uh, to have a video call that was pot that was helpful to you. That's why I do it. That's why I do it. So yeah. Questions galore. I'm still confused by lithographs, prints, and copies. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know what your confusion is, but let me explain that a lithograph is a type of print. Um, it is copied from something else, right? So what you're seeing is a lithograph is a print and a lithograph is also a copy. Um, there could be more than one lithograph of the same image, hence the copy. Um, it is printed usually from a stone that is greased and inked, and then imp that stone is impressed onto pieces of paper. That's the basic lithographic or lithography process. So I don't, hope you're not confused. Um, I've done a lot of videos. I've also given web pages and information, free information on the website about how you tell different prints and lots of videos. If you don't know where to do, where to find that, go to the search function right here on the Dr. Lori V YouTube page. It says search and put in prints and all the videos will come up where I discuss prints. I discuss lithography a lot. I've shown you how to look for it and I've showed you how to identify it. So, um, Thanks. Thanks for that question. I hope you're not confused. Hobe is very good jewelry to resell. If you want to resell it, you certainly will do fine with Hobe. People do look for it. It's kind of modern. It's kind of cool. It's a very youthful type of style of costume jewelry. It's marked very clearly Hobe. Um, I've talked about it before in many of my videos on costume jewelry. And recently there was a video up that was about which costume jewelry makers you should be looking for. And a lot of you said, Dr. Lori, I've been collecting costume jewelry for a long time and I never heard of some of these that you pointed out to me. So thanks for that. So that's why I'm here to help you with that. Yep. Whole bay is good. Do you sell China by sets or by place setting? Well, it depends on how much China you have. If you have a full service for 12, you know, you probably will do very well selling that whole service. By place setting, some people like to, to see, oh, there's a, there's a place setting for four-piece four or five-piece or six-piece or eight-piece place setting uh, for a particular set. Some people sell one cup. I've seen that happen. I've seen that happen successfully, too. It depends on the china, which type of china you're trying to sell and what market you're trying to sell it in. So, you know, like with my selling class, I talk about strategies. Where should you sell it? How should you sell it? What should you do? When should you do a buy it now? When should you do an auction? I have bought one small-ish bowl of Fenton glass. Okay. Will it sell for a decent sum? Uh, Philip, I have no idea what you bought. I don't know what a decent sum is, and I don't know how much you paid. So first of all, it's Fenton. That's good, right? So you got a nice brand name there. Is it iridescent glass? Uh, what is the pattern of it? How big is the bowl? Um, small-ish is not really a, a, you know, a dimension, so I need a little bit more than that. You know, and then what's a decent sum? If you resell it in the right place, if you sell it at the right time, if you market it correctly and list it right, you know, you could sell it, but let's see what it is first before we go saying, oh yeah, you're going to get a million dollars for it. So, you're doing great. I love the questions. Two round glass paperweights and one glass ashtray. One sign, le glass I, 30 for all three. Do you have a binge info for this? Okay, this is the kind of question where you're not really going to help everybody. I know you're trying, I know you're trying, Elizabeth. But um, I have binge info on so much glass. The binge link, which is the drlaurieve.com, the specials page, scroll down, you'll see the binge link, and it will help you with respect to these glass questions. Now, for $30 to get that type of glass, you probably did okay. But I want to know what, you know, what are the specs on what you purchased? And, you know, if you're questioning this, I want you to look in what I advise you and guide you to buy first before you buy. You'll probably do better off doing it that way. A lot of you have had a lot of success saying, I watched the videos, Dr. Lori. I took notes of what you told me to buy. And then when I saw it, I was able to recognize it and buy it. And then I flipped it for a profit. That's what most folks do. I have a carving in Chinese style. How can one tell if it's bone or plastic? Okay. 
A couple of things. Yes, I have a video on how you tell the difference between bone and ivory, but this question is about plastic. Plastic, of course, is molded, and there are many composites, right, plastic and other types of materials. Bone is very simple to identify, and it looks like striations or stripes going up and down, sort of like jail bars, right, up and down. It's very easy to find the stripes within a piece of actual bone. Um, however, that differs from ivory, and plastic usually looks like something molded, you know, Think of those little tiny, um, those little tiny military figures in plastic, and you can see the mold areas and the seams and such. It's the same if you're looking at a piece this, that just happens to be bone or ivory color. So thank you very much for the super chats and super stickers and so helping to support our channel. Um, and you're supporting everybody else too. So, you know, you're helping everybody where other people should do their part. Glass versus crystal beads, stones help. Okay. Crystal beads are usually very clear. Crystal beads are usually a little bit weighty or heavy. Crystal beads will have a lot of sparkle because they have, of course, that lead weight. And um, glass, of course, is a little bit different. Glass doesn't have the same kind of sparkle that, of course, crystal will have. And stones, it will depend on all the different type of stones. So if you're trying to compare crystal and of course, glass, I do talk about that uh, in costume jewelry videos, and I also talk about it, uh, of course, when I'm talking about glass versus crystal. But good question. Thank you. Hi, Steph. Thank you for supporting the channel. You're a great support to all of us. Thank you for not charging when my items are not worth $59. You're welcome. And not everybody does that, but yes, you're welcome. What you're talking about is you're talking about when somebody submits a picture to the website and I look at it and I say, this isn't worth the cost of an appraisal or the fee for an appraisal. This piece isn't worth enough money for you to spend money on an appraisal. And I do that and I've done that for years. And I think that's only right. I know I would be mad if somebody charged me a fee and then told me it wasn't even worth the cost of the fee, the, the amount of the fee. I'd be, I'd be mad at that. So I don't want anybody to be mad at that. But a lot of people don't do that. That is time that I spent on something where I'm not making money if people understand that part, right? I took the time, I shared the expertise and, you know, cost, it cost me something, but it cost you nothing. And I think that that's only right. Now, again, that's my choice. So how do you send a picture? You go to drlaurieV.com, right on that page, on the homepage, you're going to see a, an icon. It's a little camera. It says, send a photo, get a report, click on that at drlaurieV.com. Just click on that little icon of the camera right there on that brown circle. Send photos, get report, click, fill out the form. There is a form there and you need to fill it out. Don't just send an email and attach pictures. I need the form filled out. And try not to waste too much of my staff's time in questions when we answered them 20 times. You know, I saw some email recently where my poor staff is answering and re-answering the same question because you guys didn't bother to read. And that's not all of you, but some of you. So take another minute and just read that email and Follow those instructions, and I'm happy, happy to look at the pieces for you. Thank you very much for supporting the channel, and you're helping the whole community. Um, you're helping, again, everybody who learns from all of these. Some of you have told me, you know, in my classes or if, if you, you know, submitted something that you really like the channel and you're learning a lot, and that learning is actually inspiring you. Someone told me today, Dr. Laura, you've inspired me for years to do what I'm doing. I'm enjoying it so much, and I'm doing well at it. And I think that's great. Thank you very much, Rochelle, your sweet pie. Your sweetie pie. I appreciate that. Are Avon cars with aftershave blown in it worth much? Okay, a couple of things about Avon. You know, Avon gets, uh, I think Avon, Avon Hummel figurines and some Yadros get a bum rap, you know, because people are like, no one cares about those Avon bottles. No one wants any of that aftershave. No one cares about the Hummel figurines. I'm going to tell you what, there's big groups, big groups of people who are actually collecting these pieces. So, the aftershave, um, sometimes they're Avon cars and they're glass cards. Sometimes they're of a, they're, sometimes they're old time cars, you know, like Model T's and such. And they have sort of the brown liquid, the aftershave in them. Sometimes they're in the original boxes. Um, they can be, they're, they're not as valuable as they once were, but they can be collectible. So you will see them on the market and you will see them get traded. A lot of people just say, oh, well, uh, they're not collectible. You're seeing a younger group of collectors who are interested in them, who remember them from grandpa, right? And a lot of people are looking for them. Not tremendously high values. You know, it's not into the thousands or anything, but they do have some value. So they're worth something. If you find them and they're in good shape in the original box and full, 
you can get a couple bucks for you you don't you you know you have to really look at the market and look at what the market will bear now that's costume jewelry avon which the other person was talking about was um the collectible glass bottles the perfume bottles and such those still have uh marketability too but the costume jewelry yes and i teach you which ones are worth more so watch the channel watch the videos um Thank you very much, Lisa. We appreciate that. We do. And I appreciate uh, all the respect for the, the staff and all that they do and all that they do. I like this. This is, this is I like that. Be kind, period. Easy. <laughs> be kind. Do something for somebody else. Be kind. Be nice. Stop this. Not all of it. Not everybody's been nice. I have to tell you, there was a, a couple of people who I thought were really, really out of line on the comments last week. But, you know, that happens too. You have to ignore those people. Um, but you know, there, there's a lot, there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. There's a lot to learn here and there's a lot of fun because we're a cool community, right? And all of you guys are really cool. Don't forget to tell me where you are. I want to know I'm, I'm, I'm in Australia. I'm in Texas. I'm in Montana. Uh, I've been talking to a lot of places. I talked to Saudi Arabia today on a video call. It was a lot of fun, uh, a great artist there. So that's always fun too. Uh, but the questions, is it valuable? Do you want to know if there's something? And do you want to know, gee, is it valuable? I have no idea if this is really valuable. Is Victorian folk art dioramas? Oh, this is good and unusual, such as those hand-painted glass domes and frames with sculpted buildings, lead and paper figures. Justin, these pieces are very desirable. 19th century, late 19th century Victorian pieces. They're called folk art because, you know, it's not sort of like you have this this um, big tradition, museum tradition of them, but they really are of interest to a lot of collectors as they show genre scenes or scenes of everyday life in the 19th century. So if you look at them, they really are showing you what people lived like in the late 1800s or during the time of the reign of Queen Victoria. So yes, and depending on the complexity of them, the more complex, the more mixed media, the more different materials used, the more valuable. Bigger is better with these as well, and they have to be in good condition. So you've got to really take a look at them. Uh, but yeah, they could they go pretty high. I mean, we're talking well into the thousands easily for those. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm a solid info person. Okay. Yeah, we're info here. <laughs> we have a lot of fun too. So good to see all of you. Thank you for your questions. And, you know, don't forget about the videos. Don't forget about the classes. A lot of you learn from each other in the classes, too. Shane, is any of the Fenton that QVC stole in the 90s collectible hold any value? Was it too mass-produced? Well, you know, here's the thing. A lot of people will say, oh, you know what? If it was sold in certain areas, it's not as valuable, right? Um, so there is a lot of Fenton out there. People do collect it. Yes, it's mass-produced. You can't be too mass-produced, right? It's either mass-produced or it's not mass-produced, right? So, but for the most part, uh, the 90s pieces, I see them trade. I don't see them trade particularly high, but I do see them trade. So, you know, if you can get them for a dollar or two at a flea market or a yard sale and you can flip them for 20, hey, that's 20 times what you paid. So not terrible in terms of it. So, yeah, I mean, there's some value to it, but it certainly isn't the same as if you got, for example, you know, uh, a great and rare uh, Fenton piece, like a, um, orange tree hat pin holder or something like that. You know, one of those designs and patterns that, you know, are very, are relatively not very, but relatively difficult to find. Lori, thank you very much, Lori. I appreciate your support always. And you can support in many ways you can support, uh, Hey, you know what, get your own support. Tell everybody about your, uh, the gift certificates that are available. The gift certificates are a great, gift idea for birthdays or holiday or whatever it might be. It's what you might want to tell somebody else to get for you. And you don't have to worry about shipping, <laughs> right? So the gift certificates for appraisals and video calls are available too on our website, Travis. Well, thank you, Travis. I appreciate that. I'll say hello to your friend, Dylan. Hi, Dylan. Who had, and it would make his goal, Dylan, Merry Christmas. <laughs> thank you very much, Travis and Dylan. It's good to see you guys. So uh, thanks so much for being part of the community and thank you for the super chats and super stickers. We appreciate those. Thomas Kincaid Christmas Village Houses 
yeah, you know, the Christmas Village, people like those. Uh, you know, people like those, whether it's Department 56 or the Thomas Kincaid version. Thomas Kincaid did a lot with his images, right? So he has his images and he paints the paintings and then they make the reproduction prints and then they highlight them. And then they had the whole realm of, of course, Christmas villages and other figurines and such. So Christmas villages, I don't really see them going falling out of favor uh, very soon in general. And at holiday time, we tend to have the nostalgia thing happening. So lots of people say, oh, you know, I want to collect those. That's true. Tom's, thank you very much for your super chat and super sticker. I appreciate that. But uh, yeah, any of the, the holiday collectibles, I've talked about all holiday collect. I've talked about ornaments and how they're valuable. I've talked about lots of different holiday collectibles on my videos, including Christmas villages and which ones are most valuable. Yep. A lot of people like annual collectible plates. Um, Norman Rockwell and the Rockwell Museum um, actually introduced some uh, just after his 1978 passing. So you'll see a lot of them using those images from the Saturday Evening Post and other places. So those plates can be valuable. However, an original box is good. I'm not crazy about the ones with the years on them. I see that they take a little bit of a dip unless it's a an anniversary year or some important year like 1976, the bicentennial or um, a year that relates to like 1978 that would relate to Rockwell, his, the year of his death kind of thing. So those kinds of things. But the annual plates, I would say, um, can have some collectability. The only problem with those plates is if they're made in tens of thousands, you know, if they produce tens of thousands of them by the Franklin Mint or some of the Danbury Mint or some of these other manufacturers, when there's that many of them out there, 100,000 in a group, then, of course, value is going to be lower. But uh, some people like them for decoration, but you don't want to pay too much for them. Sabino perfume bottle labeled on the bottom. Good. I can see a signature extending outside the label barely. Good. Do I leave the label? Just leave the signature. Leave everything alone. Leave everything alone. Don't go pulling at things. Don't go ripping at things. I want to expose the signature. The signature's there. You don't have to take off the label. Leave it alone. Leave well enough alone. A lot of you are cleaning too much. A lot of you are tearing off labels. A lot of you are trying to scrub things or polish things. Sometimes it's better just leave it all alone. So, yeah, I wouldn't touch it. I wouldn't touch it. Thank you very much, Bridget. It's nice to see you. You finally figured it out. It's very nice of you to do that. Thank you. And thank you for trying it. This is what I think is cool, too, about the community. That's a great example of trying to figure out the technology because you want to do something good to help others. I think that's great because, you know, you know enough about the technology, but you're like, I didn't know how to do the super chat. And admitting it, I think, is great, too. It's not. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with saying, hey, look, I learned it. I figured it out. I think that's great. Good for you. You're cool. That's good. Yeah, you can do it. You just have to figure it out. I mean, a lot of the time you can figure it out. Uh, I have an ivory bookmarker brought back from China in 1853, the Crimean War. Oh, interesting. Should I decide to sell it? Would be an issue with it being ivory. Okay, let's talk about ivory, first of all. A lot of you, I want you to go and I want you to research, of course, what the rules are for ivory. So there's a governmental rules about being able to actually sell ivory. There's also rules with respect to antique ivory. And then there are rules that are just made by some of the online platforms that really have nothing to do with the legality of selling ivory. Some of the online platforms, the Ebays and others, just say, we don't want to sell it. We're not going to allow you to sell it. Well, it's their platform. They can make those kinds of decisions. But the Fish and Wildlife Service.gov will tell you what are the rules for actually selling ivory. They'll also indicate the difference between elephant ivory and of course, ivory that's more than a particular uh, many years old. So that's the other reason, uh, that's the other criteria that you need with respect to ivory. But this idea that, oh, it's ivory, oh gosh, I can't sell it. I want you to be careful with those kinds of generalizations. That's not really the way the art and antiques and resale works world works. So yeah, think about that. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. So I want to see something from Dylan here. I just did the whole big, hi, Dylan, where is he? Let's see some comment from Dylan. Anyway, Travis and Dylan are doing something so to make to make somebody's day. So maybe a, a, a comment. Can you talk about the Knoll stamp on collector's plate? Yeah, the Knoll stamp is typically on collector's plates. It indicates, of course, the manufacturer, the mass production of these particular types of plates. You'll see all different ones. You'll see Knolls. You'll see all different types. 
There's oftentimes a lot of information on the back of those collector's plates, if you and I are thinking of the same plates, but on the back of those plates, um, things like how many are in the actual run or how many were actually produced, when were they produced, were they fired on certain days? You know, we have firing of only 250 days and then we stop firing, that kind of thing. It could say that. You got to really read what's on the back of the plate. It'll tell you a lot. It'll tell you whether it's bone china, whether it's porcelain, whether it's hand glaze, whether it's hand painted, all these kinds of things. Whether it's transferware, it should tell you all that. And a date is usually back there too. So are the classes on Zoom? Yes, 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 and yes. My classes... All the different ones are on Zoom. You can use your phone for class. Yes. You can use a computer for class. Yes. Whatever you want to do. It's very easy to do. You just download Zoom.com. It's easy. Um, and then, of course, you have to sign up for the classes. Um, and then I always say, you know, they fill up fast. So get into the website. Go to the events. At the top, it says events. Click on there. Scroll down. Pick the class that you want and the date that you want and follow through. Right there next to home. Underneath specials and shop, go to events. Click on it and go into the calendar and you'll see the calendar for the months and you just see the class and say, oh, I want that class. And, you know, basically sign up. It's easy. And then you'll, of course, go through the payment uh, process. Ha, about QVC, I purchased a few Kenneth J. Lane necklaces that I discovered were sold there. I was excited about Kenneth J. Lane, but went meh when I saw QVC. Same question. Okay, so you weren't happy because they were QVC, but they are Kenneth J. Lane and some people do actually want that because they're Kenneth J. Lane. So you still can do okay with those. Um, again, a lot of people are saying, oh, well, it's lower quality because it's QVC. That's not always the case either. Um, you can really find a lot of pieces. And there, there are a lot of pieces, a lot of people who are reselling. I just talked to somebody today who said this, you know, that they went through the house and a lot of the stuff came from the home shopping networks like QVC. Um, and she said, you know, I did well with reselling all that stuff. So, you know, it depends on where your price point is. So there you go. That's great. Well, don't wait a whole month. If I'm going to see you in, in classes, I want to see you soon. So don't wait too long. I want to see you watching these videos because if you don't watch them, then I don't feel like there's a reason to make them. So you need to watch the videos. So make sure you're watching. And if you miss something, watch it again or use the binge link and watch a different one. There's lots of videos of mine out there. Are any and all cast iron banks valuable regardless they are original or repro? This is a good question. So um, cast iron banks, whether they are just cast iron or they're mechanical banks made of cast iron, they're different, um, can be extremely valuable. The reproduction ones are sometimes called the world of knowledge, and they're marked right on the bottom, world of knowledge. They were made in the 1950s. Those are not as valuable as the early 20th century or the late 1800s versions, right? But even the reproduction ones do have a market. They don't have the same level of value as, of course, the antique pieces, and they have to be in good condition. But cast iron banks have been a longstanding collectible, and lots of people like them. You want to look for certain characteristics of them, too. Are items marked with W Germany more valuable? More valuable than what? W Germany means that they were made in West Germany and that they were made following, of course, World War II. And I want to know if they're more valuable than what? Ones that only say Germany or any other, any other object? So West German pieces can be valuable, certainly, whether they're jewelry, whether they're brooches, whether it's... Uh, uh, China, I mean, all kinds of stuff comes out of West Germany. So, um, okay, that's your opinion. Don't watch. See ya. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how I'm fraudulent and you have an opinion and we don't know why you think this. So I think, I don't know why you're, you want any of my information. Why are you watching if you think I'm a fraud? <laughs> that's really my question. If you think I'm a fraud and you want to say that, and you think that that's that you're you know a strong person behind your keyboard saying things like that, then I don't know why you're watching me. Go watch somebody you don't think is a fraud, and see if they can give you the kind of information that I can give you. You know, I have four Rembrandt etchings that I got from my uncle. Uh huh. There's a small Rembrandt Rembrandtus Amsterdam stamp on the back. Should I open up the other three? Open it up like they're in a frame and you're afraid to open up the frame, 
uh, there's a couple of questions. First of all, where did you get them? What type of thing are you opening them up from? Um, is there any other marking on the piece? And do you know, David, how to send me a photo? Click on that link on that page, on the web page, that little camera icon, and send me a picture. Send photos, get a report. Click on that. It's going to bring you to a form. Fill out the form. Each one of your Rembrandt pieces needs its own form. Don't send me three. Don't send me three on the same form. One object, one form. I need a picture of the front, picture of the back, and a close-up of any marking or signature. And uh, I'll be able to help you to identify what's what. But opening them up, you're going to have to see what's what. Well, thank you very much. I could use more of the support, you know, support like this. Because you know what? These other people who are starting this nonsense and want to do this nonsense, if I don't see the support from the rest of you, I'm going to think that's what you guys think. So, but, you know, I, I don't, I also don't want my time wasted. You know, you don't know how much time anybody's got left. So, you know what? I don't want my time wasted. I don't want your time wasted either. So that was a wasted question. Speaking of trolls. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, Simon. Oh, that's funny. Troll doll puzzle. Okay. Dress like a clown, the blue and the pink, nine pieces made of wood. It could have some value. Yes. Because people collect certain things, right? So the troll doll, you're with the little blue hair spiked up, right? Um, wooden pieces and pieces that have better quality materials, right? Um, are going to be valuable and just collectability. Some people might say, oh, I just love trolls and anything troll I want. So you might be able to find that collector. I don't think you'll have much trouble if you're going to resell something like that. So, yeah. Thank you very much, Wendy. I appreciate that. I appreciate that very much. It helps, it helps us when you guys support the channel and it helps when you support me just personally. I'm a person, I'm a human. You know, I have feelings too when people say lousy things that aren't really warranted. You know, you start to go, well, why am I bothering? You know, and I don't want to get to that point. Some days I get to that point, but somebody like that person who just wants to just go, it's my opinion, so it's okay for me to say this stuff. I'm sorry, in a, in a polite society, it's not okay for you to say this stuff. Don't hide behind the keyboard. If you want to say something like that, you have to have reasons for why I'm a fraud. <laughs> so, you know, that's how that goes. I have a mask about a large storage tub of marbles. Marbles can be valuable. Depends on which ones. Right. Right. Okay. Yes, they can be appraised. Some of the more valuable ones I talk about actually on videos and also on my um, research pages on my website. I don't know if you've been to the research part of my re website, but it's a whole lot of information about what's what. You know, I've been an internationally syndicated columnist for decades and all of those articles, right, are out there. A lot of articles that I've written about all different art antiques and collectibles topics, um, including marbles are there. Some of the more desirable ones uh, might be a Lutz swirl or they might be uh, those that have a small little figurine inside of a clear shaped marble. Some of the big shooters can be valuable. It depends. But marbles can have some value. They're a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, William. I thank you for so many things. Thank you very much. It's always nice to see from, see you. So I appreciate that. And yeah, it's integrity. It's honesty. It's longstanding. You know, I, you know, I've been, I've been walking this path for a long, long time, more than tw almost 25 years now. So value to Amrita Singh Jewelry. Yes. Yes. I haven't talked about that yet in one of uh, my video is about jewelry, but I certainly will, Judy. Yeah. So I want you to be aware of lots of these designers and lots of these makers that you may not know. And here's an example. So I'm doing an appraisal and I see an actual mark on the back of a piece, a piece that is um, from Italy in the 19th century. It's a beautiful piece. And the mark is actually indicated in letters, you know, in three initials, right? So the three initials are there. So I know what these three initials stand for. And I start to do some research on it. And I see that there's many of this particular designer's pieces selling on different Etsy, eBay, Poshmark, all these different platforms. And it's under the incorrect name. The full last name of the designer is truncated or cut off. So it's not the full designer's last name. It's only part of it. And they're saying that that's the name of this person and the name of this factory. And it's not. They've got the wrong name. And people are actually looking at the first person who made the mistake and replicating the mistake when they do their own listing. 
So people go, oh, we didn't know that. I took it from this eBay listing that I found, or I took it from this Etsy listing that I found. And basically what you had was only a portion of this particular manufacturer's last very long Italian last name. So they don't get it right. And then everybody else copies. Oh, I saw it, it, it selling here. It's not even the right name. And they're sitting there as if they're experts. So you want to talk about all of these people who are experts. And I saw it also incorrectly in one of the Facebook groups on jewelry. But you don't want me to say, oh, gee, they're incorrect. When in fact, that's a big mistake. And the values were wrong too, because they couldn't find sales records for the truncated or shortened name, which was the wrong name of this particular designer. They couldn't find the sales records for the designer because they didn't have the, the full name. So they got the wrong sales records. They're put, charging everything low. And some of the people who actually knew the val knew the actual maker and recognized the object, got the object for a song. So you got to know what you're doing. Don't follow these people who don't know what they're doing. Oh, well, you know, Dr. Lori, she says this and that. Well, you know, I'm correcting these people who are wrong. And those people who you're, you're following these listings got it all wrong. I mean, you know, it's not half a name, right? It's got to have the full name. So that was a mess. That was a mess this week that I had to fix. So then they go, oh, well, we didn't know. Oh, we're just learning. Yeah. And then I'm not an expert. So, you know, Terry, thank you. I thank you very much. That's going to help tremendously. I appreciate that. And what that tells me is Terry's getting a lot out of this, whether it's she she did found something on my, on here on the channel that helped and then she was able to resell something or she found something that she's been looking for for her own collection or she's just a generous person who says, I want to support everybody. And you're supporting everybody when you do that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. That's very nice. Melissa, thank you. Um, I'm your favorite person. You're so sweet. How can you change between pinwheel patterns, the earlier pinwheel patterns, pinwheel patterns from the 80s? Okay. There's more. This is about American Brilliant Cut. Uh, pieces. And basically those pinwheels, they look like sort of starbursts that are moving almost more indicators or, or more and thinner, thinner and more actual shoots out of each one are usually the patterns from the 1980s. And I'll, I'll try to find a 1980s pattern and also an older pattern and show you the difference. If I had to compare and contrast, I would do that. Now, those of you who are saying, Oh, show me, show me, show me. I didn't know this, this, question was coming. I don't have any resource or way right now to show you the examples. So I'm sorry for that. But thank you very much, Melissa. Small little shoots are the 1980s usually. Um, know that all too well. Thanks. I was able to figure out my artwork. Oh, great. Okay. Thanks very much. And thank you very much for your super chat, super sticker. Um, a lot of you folks are responding to, you know, maybe I did a video call or maybe I, I answered portion of a question and you're getting back. So if you didn't understand what that that was. <laughs> so thank you for that. I appreciate that very much. I appreciate that very much. Keep the questions coming. Is it valuable? Do you want to know if it's valuable? Soon I'm going to tell you about the uh, Humpty Dumpty over here, whether or not he's valuable. What's your take on vintage movie posters? I love vintage movie posters. They're fantastic. And rock and roll and music. And thank you very much for su the support. Yeah, movie posters pre-1990s, you know, anything pre 2000s. And then don't forget about big ones, big names like Star Wars and Marvel. And, you know, of course, um, you know, X-Men, all those kinds of things. Um, uh, the rock and roll posters too. And don't forget about exhibition design, exhibition posters of major artists from galleries. Those posters sell very well too. You know, Matisse in, I don't know, in um, Saint-Tropez or something like that. Those will be pretty popular and valuable. Yeah, very good. Holiday Barbies. I talked about Barbies just, I think it was last week. I was talking about Barbies in their collectible boxes. So there's videos of those that you could watch too. Yep. I talk about those from the nineties. Uh-huh. A lot of people collect them. A lot of people collect them. And Cabbage Patch dolls. They collect those. And of course the American Girl dolls. They collect those. And I've talked about all of these. And if you haven't seen them, this is why I want you to sign up for the newsletter. This is why I want you to use the binge link. We're making it easier for you. If I had to say turn your horn, <laughs> well, I, 
I understand that not everybody is ready to go when it comes to the Ask Dr. Lori lives and having the camera a certain way. I also understand that sometimes you have this phone, maybe you're using a phone, and you don't realize that it's set on something. I mean, we all do this kind of stuff. Um, in terms of patience, I think um, I think that I'm patient sometimes. I think I'm a human being and I'm not patient other times. I think when someone says, you know, oh, you're not you're not being patient and you should check yourself and you're terrible. And, the, you know, I think that for the most part, you know, I don't want the rest of you to get, uh, you know, fidgety and say, oh, gosh, this person can't do it. They're trying. But on the same token, I also am concerned about you guys who are watchers. And I want you guys to get as much information out of this as you can during, of course, the videos. So I think that's I think that's that's reasonable. That's a reasonable uh, way to, to put it anyway. You know, I'll answer it. I'll tell you whatever you, what do you want me to tell you about my personal life? I've been making cookies and trying not to burn stuff this week. So that's what I've been doing this week. And then I try to put them in the freezer cause I don't want to eat too many. You know, I can have a few and then I got to get rid of them, you know, kind of thing. But I like the process of the quiet so I can think. I don't know if you guys do that, but I have a whole thing about, can I have some quiet so I can think? So I can do what I do all the time. People say, oh, you work all the time. Oh, you do everything all the time. Well, I like my work. I love my work. But I also need some town time to be able to process. But anyway, that that's that got off on the cookie tangent. But I like cookies too. <laughs> so there you go. There you go. How can we decipher between an established painting piece versus a studio painter? Okay. I don't, I, I think I know what you're talking about, but I don't know. So how do you decipher between a, twi an ar a painting by a trained artist and a painting by an artist who is an amateur? I, is that your question? Because there are trained artists who are also considered studio painters. Um, so a couple of different things. Um, first of all, once you identify and keep looking at paintings, and I've talked a lot about composition of paintings. I've talked a lot about what to look for with canvases. On this channel, I've done videos about what, what compositional elements will be important to your eye, diagonals and, and horizontals and perspective and you know total effect and all of these things. I've taught that on this channel. I've done videos of that about painting often. And basically, um, I, I want you to have a sense that these particular trained artists, once you start to get a feel for what they should look like, the junk will look so much like junk to you that you will not make that mistake. You will go, oh my gosh, I don't want that because it doesn't look good enough. And that's what I want to do. I want to train your eyeballs and educate your eyeballs. There's not other people who can do that for you. <laughs> you know, there are not, I'm sorry. And I go, oh, she's going to talk about her credentials again. Well, my credentials are why I'm able to do this for you. And the fact that I want to do it for you. Yes, that's my question, amateur versus professional. Yes. So I want you to watch those videos about paintings, art, and sometimes it's, you know, all different types of videos on my binge link. And you could just put in painting in the search right here on Dr. Lori V on the YouTube channel, right here with the videos, and you will see what the difference is. And as you look at these pieces, you're going to see more and more, you know, the painting behind me is behind me because it's good painting. I'm not going to put some piece of junk behind me and have you look at it the whole time. So that's basically what you what I want you to get a sense of. But yes, I want you to look for training. I want you to find out what the credentials are. And that's what I mean about experts. You know, there's something to be said for where does this person get this information and how come, you know, they know this versus somebody else who may not know this information. So I want you to understand that information as well. And speaking of information, you're wondering if it's valuable. Well, here is the 1950s era Humpty Dumpty cookie jar made in America. Be nice piece, good condition. It also came in a yellow, um, but this one is the red version. What's it worth? About $250. So it's valuable if you were wondering. I'm Dr. Lori. Thanks for being with me. I'll see you next time.